Can you imagine starting a family being a fireable offense? How about job security hinging on your looks or the fact that you aren't one of the guys? What if day-to-day tasks like opening a bank account or establishing a line of credit required your husband's signature? What if your gender hindered you from achieving anything higher than a secretarial position? This was reality for women in American history, and changing the system required a mind that offered up a drastic transformation in ideas and beliefs. One woman met these standards, fighting for equality arguably harder than any other of her day, and continues to be a strong advocate for this issue. Gloria Steinem, the mother of second wave feminism, broke down the walls that kept women from achieving their full potential. The 1960s was a time of great conflict between many. Whether it be because of power, race, or gender, the world as it was previously known was evolving rapidly. One issue specifically was taken to heart by many. Gender equality became a hot topic at many families' dinner tables in this time period, dealing with the varying opinions on a woman's place in the home. This this idea that a woman could accomplish just as much as any man could was shaking a nation to its core. Due to her extensive efforts in the women's liberation movement in the 60s and co-founding the first feminist magazine, Ms. Magazine, Gloria Steinem is one of the most influential women in American history. Gloria Steinem was born on March 25, 1934 in Toledo, Ohio, but her life was not always easy. Steinem's childhood consisted of a lot of traveling. Due to her excessive traveling, she lacked a real education, and when questioned about it, her mother claimed to homeschool her. When her parents divorced, her father separated from the family, and Steinem was faced with the challenge of caring for her mentally ill mother. She spent six years caring for her mother before she made her way to Smith College, where she would be studying government. This was very unusual for a woman at that time, but she didn't want to follow the traditional expectations of finding a husband or becoming a mother. Steinem told People Magazine, in the 1950s, once you married, you became what your husband was, so it seemed like the last choice you'd ever have. I'd already been the very small parent of a very big child, my mother. I didn't want to end up taking care of someone else. Steinem's difficult past shaped her into an unconventional yet independent woman. In 1956, Steinem finished her degree at Smith College and received the opportunity to study in India where she worked for Independent Research Service and later found herself a job as an independent writer. One of her most famous reports from the time was a 1963 article on New York City's Playboy Club for Show magazine. She went undercover for the report, working as a waitress or a bunny as they were called at the club. In her article, she exposed the exploitation and patronizing behavior towards women that occurs in the Playboy industry. In the late 1960s, she helped create New York Magazine and wrote a column on politics. I was assigned things about fashion and food and makeup and babies, where the low point of my life textured stockings, she once said. She knew she was capable of more, but it was not until one story that she covered that she unlocked her true passion and potential. An abortion hearing she reported on, given by the radical feminist called the Red Stockings, opened her eyes to social injustice going on between the genders. Because she had an abortion at the age of 22, which she kept secret at the time, her views were influenced strongly for the duration of this hearing. She realized that she was not the only one that had gone through this hardship and began to understand that this was just one of the ways that women were being unfairly treated. Her views were expressed in her essays, such as After Black Power and Women's Liberation. She covered the abortion hearing for New York Magazine in 1969. This led to the nationwide Women's Strike for Equality March on August 26, 1970, and the 50th anniversary of the enactment of women's suffrage. In 1972, she co-founded Miss Magazine, which symbolized independence for many women considering, at the time, the feminist movement was dismissed. It broke many common stereotypes by discussing topics that were never even considered in other magazines, such as repealing laws that criminalize abortion, advocating for the ERA, women's issues, domestic violence, and sexual harassment. Miss Magazine made it possible for women's voices to be heard and provide insight to the rest of the world from a woman's perspective. Today, even at 82 years old, she is one of the most well-known American feminists and is still working for social equality. She believes that women have come a long way as far as fighting for their social equality goes. However, now she believes that it is the men's turn to do their part in the movement. Steinem was quoted as saying, We demonstrated that women can do what men do, but not yet that men can do what women do. That's why most women have two jobs, one inside the home and one outside of it, which is impossible. The truth is that women can't be equal outside the home until men are equal in it. The work that she continues to participate in, such as interviews, writing books, and even giving speeches, goes to show that she is far from finished working to make the gender gap a distant memory of a world order that no longer exists.